Hey friends, Sean from Draft Therapy here, and on today's review for you, this is all the things a good treasure hunter could ever want. Fire Skulls and Money is a 7.2% IPA from Toppling Goliath Brewing Company in Decorah, Iowa. This review is actually supposed to be a review of Toppling Goliath's Pseudo Sue, but I kind of felt like if you wanted to see a review of that beer, there are other channels that probably have done it better than I could have done. So if you're still interested in my take, let me know. Maybe we'll do a beer brief. But I got both Fire, Skulls and Money, and Pseudo Sue in a Tavor order that I received just a few weeks ago. Now that we've been staying at home so much, I really haven't gotten a chance to leave the house to buy any beer, so I figured it'd be a good time to start talking about that order that I got from Tavor. Now, Fire Skulls and Money is what Toppling Goliath calls a rotating beer. Think of it as a seasonal release. They use Citro, Mosaic, Galaxy, and Nelson hops in this one, which from the sounds of it could be a pretty tasty New England style IPA, but I don't think that's what this is. So let's take a look at the label. We'll get it into a glass and see if my hunch is correct or if it's way off. Fun fact, Toppling Goliath has distribution in over 20 states, including Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio. Do you notice any state missing from that little rundown? All right, let's take a look at the can. So on the front of the can has these three really reflective skulls. It's basically the reflection of the can itself. There's no paint on it, no wrap, no, no label on it in that spot, but it's got these three skulls sitting on a pile of these Toppling Goliath coins with fire rising up in the background. From the top down, it says Toppling Goliath Brewing Company. Uh, then their seal, their logo, Toppling Goliath Brewing. And then again, the skulls, the fire, the money. It says Fire Skulls and Money India Pale Air. And then if we look on the back here, it says, Inspired by a trip to the West Coast, designed to capture the wild spirit of adventure, and brewed to be enjoyed with friends. This rich IPA is for those with wanderlust in their hearts and fire in their eyes. Join our Citra Mosaic Galaxy and Nelson Hops on a journey to the bottom of your glass. Brewed by Toppling Goliath Brewing Company in Decorah, Iowa. And again, I'm probably mispronouncing Decorah. It says... Uh, live beer or live beer. I'm thinking it says live beer. Please refrigerate. This was canned on February 26, 2020. And what I like about what they do on these cans, they not only tell you the package date, but they tell you when you should finish it. Best Buy, June 25th, 2020. I'm like right in the middle. I'm late April here that I'm recording this. So I'm, this is, I'm thinking this is going to be a typical, not a typical, but a traditional West Coast style IPA. So I'm going to use a white uh, IPA glass here. Let's go ahead and crack it and get a nose on the can. Yeah, like I said, I got this in Pseudo Sue. I just figured there's so many people that have done Pseudo Sue reviews that if you wanted to see a Pseudo Sue review, there are probably people that could have talked about it way better than I could have. But again, if you want to hear my take, let me know. Maybe we'll do a beer brief on it. So putting a nose on it, it actually smells very dank. Has a nice citrusy quality to it. So I'm thinking it's a, a West Coast just by reading the description. That's all I read. I didn't look at anything else online. But it smells kind of fruity, kind of juicy, orange juicy. Let's pour this. Really yellow coming out of the can. It's not, not uh, really putting much of a hazy kind of idea in my head just looking at it pour. We're going to pour this nice and slow right down the middle. That is, again, this glass is... The headmaster, the headmaster glass. I'm almost getting from the pour. I can. I'm smelling a, a. You know, I'm just smelling the beer coming off of the glass, and I'm almost getting like a pineapple juice kind of vibe from the pour. It's actually very, um, very forefront. Let's go ahead and hold up the light. That head is just incredible. It's like super dense, super nice and bright white. There is actually a lot of stuff, you know, particles floating in suspension here, and. Uh, a lot of carbonation. This is actually kind of a little bit thicker than I was expecting it to be. And I'm not seeing much uh, as way of maybe shadow, but no detail. And there's like some big chunks floating in there. Let's put a nose on the glass here. Now my mustache. I'm getting, again, I'm getting that orange juicy smell. I am picking up on a little bit of a pineapple aroma. It's, it just smelled so much stronger coming on the pour though, that I'm getting just out of the glass itself. So I'm going to pour a little bit more in there. And let's go ahead and take a drink. Cheers. So 
So it actually does have a lot of that juicy kind of flavor in there too. So it's not just the, the aroma itself isn't just juicy, but this is juicy too. I wouldn't put it in New England style territory, um, but I would put it in like a, it's like a West Coast New England kind of hybrid. But let's start from the top. We'll talk about the mouthfeel. We'll go through all the flavors and everything, and then I'll kind of give you the brass tacks here. It's got a really nice mouthfeel, really light. A little crispy, not too crisp, not too light, uh, but it has like, it's just kind of like a little bit lighter than medium, but it's super refreshing. The, the mouthfeel is just a nice, light, kind of crispy, kind of just on your tongue flavor. And then I get this kind of um, tropical, juicy, orangey flavor sweetness at the at the forefront it's not super bursting bright in your face but it's it's a little bit muted but it's it's this citrus and pineapple and tropical kind of fruit flavor that comes up and then on the aftertaste the finish is this nice really strong uh, orange hoppy bitterness it's got maybe a tiny just hint of piney kind of resinous in there as well on the and the after aftertaste like as it settles on my tongue and after the swallow after the swallow we get that orange citrus uh, kind of hoppy bitterness but then after that is when this um, kind of piney almost resinous flavor comes through let's get another drink here The finish itself is a little dry, actually. I wasn't expecting it to be have such a kind of dry up kind of flavor on my tongue. It it seems like once I swallow that that aftertaste comes through, that second aftertaste where the piney kind of resinous hoppiness comes through, then it almost dries up my tongue. I feel like that bitterness sits on my tongue, but it feels dry. Like I need feel like I need to take another drink, and I have a little bit left in this can, so let's pour that a little bit more in here. Not a big alcohol bite to it. It's surprisingly not very, um, 7.2%. That's not, you know, again, that's not huge by today's standards. So it's not, you know, over the top, but I would say, you know, we probably want to take it easy after a couple of these. It's not something I think you'd want to drink over and over and over, like back to back to back. Um, but you can definitely do it 7.2%. That's not too bad. I'm sure some of you guys are seasoned and 7.2% doesn't uh, set you back too much. Ooh. But yeah, just overall, really citrusy, really uh, orange, juicy. Again, I'm getting a little bit of a tropical, a little bit of a pineapple-y kind of taste in there. I'm getting that on the aroma too, more overwhelmingly citrus than anything else. But And then on the finish, the citrus, I think the citrus flavor gives way to the citrus hoppy bitterness. And then that gives way even more uh, down at the end with this kind of piney, uh, hoppy, resinous flavor and that's a really nice change of pace again I, I looked at this and all the hop combinations sounded like an awesome New England style IPA and then reading the description says like oh well you know it, it's reminiscent of this uh, inspired by this west coast trip to the west coast but it's it lives between the two it lives between the New England and the juicy and the hoppy and just the super thick you know heady um, hazy kind of beer that we're used to or that you know has become so popular and then it has these roots on the tail end I mean, almost literally roots, because that's what's kind of holding it in place, is this uh, just resinous citrus and resinous piney bitterness. It's a really good bridge between two worlds. And now I'm actually looking forward to trying that pseudo Sue, both from Toppling Goliath in Decorah, Iowa. All right, friends, that has been Fire, Skulls, and Money from Toppling Goliath Brewing Company. Have you had this beer before? Do you have any favorites from Toppling Goliath? Or are you curious about my pseudo suit take? Again, let me know in the comments down below while you're down there. If you like beer, you might want to subscribe and click that bell because I'm here talking about beer twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays consistently, all for free for viewers just like you. And you might miss your newest favorite if you're not subscribed and getting those notifications. So until next time, I'm Sean from Draft Therapy. Thanks for stopping by. And remember, stay safe, drink craft beer, support your local breweries wherever they are. And most importantly, don't forget to treat yourself to a little draft therapy. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.